guys, welcome back to the Rough Cuts Garage. Today we're going to be installing a Steed Speed Manifold on our first gen Cummins. Okay, so the parts that we're going to be throwing onto the truck today is a Steed Speed Manifold. These manifolds are manufactured by Steed Speed in the interior of BC. They're all handmade. This one is for our 5.9 Cummins. And what they do is they take a, basically a block of steel, they cut out two halves and then weld them together and then make this really nice uh, product here that has um, expanded openings and then one benefit of these as well is that over time they don't like through the expansion and contraction cycles uh, they're not going to crack they're not going to bust off your um, bolts and it's just a really nicely made product one neat feature that they also have are pre-tapped uh, ports for an EGT probe or say an exhaust gas pressure probe, like whatever probe you want to throw in there, um, it comes pre-tapped. Um, this probe here that I have is an autometer probe and this will complete my gauge setup uh, that I've also, in another video, I install four overhead gauges and this is the last sensor that I need to install. I've been waiting to install this in order to hook this up, um, but your EGT probe uh, can fit in one of these and then in the kit that comes with it also has a plug for the other hole if you're not planning on hooking up any other gauges. The kit also provides uh, six gaskets and they are, I believe they're stainless steel and they're, I think they're three or four piece gaskets. Um, all six of them are supplied in the kit. The kit also comes with these four studs for the turbo, the hardware for the turbo and a turbo gasket as well design and built in the same fashion as these ones. So the kit doesn't come with these bolts. I had to pick them up myself and all the sizes and specs for these bolts are linked in the description. Um, they are 10.9 grade, I believe. And uh, so I just picked this up from a hardware store um, to replace them. So without further ado, let's get to installing the manifold. What I'm gonna do is take off these heater lines to better access the exhaust manifold. Uh, I'm going to take off uh, these rubber elbows here. I have replacement elbows that I'm going to put on instead. And uh, it's just these pipe clamps here and down here as well. The size for the bolt on the back here is 13 millimeters and the one on top is 10. right down there is another hose clamp and you're gonna have to undo that one it's also eight millimeters now I'm gonna take some channel locks and back off these clamps here next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off the air intake hose here and this is an 11 millimeter deep socket. So when the intake manifolds are installed, there's actually a sequence to the bolts that you need to tighten them in. What I'm gonna do is the opposite of that. Normally what they do is they go from the inside out. So for loosening, I'm gonna go start from the outside in. So what I'm gonna do now is hit these bolts with a 13 millimeter socket and impact driver. just I'm not going too hard on the I'm just giving little zaps of the impact driver using this uh, universal joint fitting here so what I'm gonna try and do is not completely remove the turbo I'm going to try and undo it from the manifold and maybe I can just like bring it off, slide in the uh, new manifold and then just lean it back up again. We'll try and do that. Um, things to be cautious about are the two oil lines that run to the turbo. So you got your oil feed here, which is okay because it's relatively flexible. Uh, but down here you've got your oil drain, which is a hard line. So 
I'm gonna see what I can get away with. I might have to take the turbo off, but we're gonna try not to. So these bolts on here for the turbo are 15 millimeter. So now you get all the nuts off the turbo and you can see it has just enough give to clear these studs here. So now what I'm gonna do is take my 14 millimeter on the impact and loosen off or back out all of the bolts that hold on the manifold um, so we can then remove the manifold. got the old manifold off and I just I'm gonna put them side by side just for a comparison here so you can see all the angles on the stock one here there's a lot of sharp sort of turns and the ports on them I'll, I'll flip them over so you can see this difference in port size but you can already see here that in the steed speed it's more of a gradual sweep around and the flow of exhaust gases will be more optimized and will hopefully get faster turbo spool after we install this. The exhaust ports respectively, the steed speed is slightly larger. So if you measure from the inside there, it's about an inch and it's about an inch and a quarter. And then when you bring it over to the steed speed, you've got about an extra eighth of an inch of opening uh, in width. And then for the steed height, let's call it one and three quarters. And then for the stock, uh, we've got about one and five eighths. So that there's a comparison between the old and the steed. And it's pretty notable the difference in style and design that the steed speed will offer better flow for exhaust gases reaching the turbo. I'm just gonna use some parts cleaner and a scratch pad and clean up all the surfaces for the exhaust ports and the T3 inlet surface for the turbo. It's important to get all these surfaces as clean as possible. That way you reduce the chance of leaks in your exhaust system. Now what we can do is bring in the new manifold with the bolts. Okay, so don't do what I did. I assumed that these bolts would work because they worked on the old one, but they do not work on the new one. They're too long. So I'm gonna have to go back and return those and get shorter bolts. So these bolts here should be the right size. They're M10 by 1.5 by 30, uh, 30 millimeters in length. I'll lift the manifold over onto the engine bay and we'll get two bolts in on the middle two here. And that way we can kind of just like hang it in place while we can slide the gaskets and other bolts on, finger tight them, and then we'll bring the turbo back into position and do the turbo. Okay, so you can see here that each gasket has a notch cut in the top of it. So we've noticed that we kind of like the fitment better with the notch on top. I'm not exactly sure which way they're supposed to go, if any, um, but we're just going to make sure that they all go notch on top just for our own personal liking. And uh, don't forget to anti-seize these bolts as well uh, before fastening them on. We've got all the bolts and the gaskets in place. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna torque them down to 32 foot-pounds each. So in order to torque them down, there's a series, which I'll display on the screen here. And what you need to do is go in that order. Essentially what you're doing is you're working from the center outwards and that way your manifold will be lined up properly. This is from the factory service manual. And I've decided to just use the same method 
for the steed speed manifold. All right, so we've got all the bolts torqued down to 32 foot pounds. So a 30 millimeter uh, M10 by 1.5 uh, is the perfect bolt size. You can see right here, the back of the bolt runs flush with the amount of metal here. So there's nothing poking out. Looks nice and neat as you look down the row there. So they're the 30 millimeters is the perfect size for the steed speed manifold. Uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put the studs back up through the turbo and mount the turbo to the manifold. The stud will come up short end first through here. And then we gotta put the wash or the gasket on between these two. And then this will screw in to the steed speed. All right, so I've got the threads started on these. What I'm gonna do now is take two nuts, load them on the ends of these, and then create sort of a lock stop washer. And then I can use a wrench to get them in as far as they can go. And these are 17 millimeters. I've disconnected the oil feed line and just shoved a piece of paper towel in there just to protect it and make sure that debris doesn't get down there. That was a 17 millimeter that worked. All right, we've got all four studs screwed all the way into the manifold. Now we're going to put on the nuts and washers, how it's gonna work. So we're gonna put on a flat washer, then a lock washer, and then the nut. And then we're gonna torque all those down to 32 foot pounds. Um, I'm probably not gonna be able to get my torque wrench in there, so I'm just going to snug it up nice and tight. So now the turbo's back on and everything's been torqued down to 32 foot pounds, nice and tight. And what we're going to do now is reinstall all of the coolant lines that run over top of the manifold and the oil feeder to the turbo and the air intake. After that, we'll connect up our sensor and block off the secondary port, uh, tapped port that's on top of the manifold that you see there. So the steed speed manifold doesn't have these two mounting, uh, I guess, posts here that the stock one does. So these actually were where these brackets here would hold your heater lines. So we don't have those, but what I did do is buy some replacement uh, rubber elbows and coolant hose, and hopefully that'll support the weight of the lines. They don't weigh very much, so it should be fine. And my plan is to just leave them kind of floating over top. So one thing I noticed was the oil feed line off the turbo actually contacts the steed speed manifold right here and kind of applies some pressure to it. Um, one of my buddies suggested that what I do is I flip this line around so that this 90 degree bend here turns off before it actually gets close to the manifold and then just have the straight section come down into the top of the turbo. So the size for the nuts on the oil line is uh, 5 8 So we've got the elbow down here and you can see it's no longer touching the manifold and then it runs up here and then straight down into the turbo. I think Okay, so we've got all the lines here all connected. Reminder the one that's on top here runs to the, if you're facing the truck from head on, um, the left hose here, and then the one that runs down here runs into the right hose. All right, so here are the two ports. 
the port on the left, I'm going to install the pyrometer sensor. And then on the right, I'm going to just install the plug. Okay, so we've got our parameter gauge in there, our plug in there, and our wire organized back here. Now what we can do is refill the radiator with coolant. So also to note, the only reason why I had to drain the rad is because I removed this pipe here. The outlet to it is down here, which is lower than most of the rad. So if you don't do that, once you pop that off, it'll basically empty it for you all over the floor. Okay, so that there completes the install of a Steed Speed manifold and a first-gen Cummins. Thanks a lot for watching, and we hope to see you next time. Cheers.